Hello, and welcome to another edition of Engage Richland on Richland County Television. I'm your host, Paul Harris. On October 16th, the Columbia Richland County Fire Department celebrated its new fire truck during a push-in event. It was the second push-in event this year. County Council Member Allison Terracio, along with County Administrator Leonardo Brown and Assistant County Administrator Dr. John Thompson were joined by City of Columbia officials for the celebration at Station 9 on Divine Street. Here are some sights and sounds. The new truck costs $1.2 million and it will service the Five Points area. If you're in need of a new face mask, don't worry, Richland County has you covered. The county continues to distribute face masks on a first come first service basis on Fridays at select locations around the county. To find out the next stop on our face mask giveaway, visit richlandcountysc.gov slash face mask. On October 16th, County Councilwoman Joyce Dickerson of District 2 held a mask and food giveaway and was also recognized by organizations for her 17 years of hard work and service to the citizens and businesses in Richland County, District 2. The Councilwoman will be leaving office in January. Richland County recently debuted Engage Richland, the virtual series where we give you an inside look at various county departments and programs. A Q&A and a virtual tour of the Alvin S. Glenn Detention Center debuted in September and is available on the county social media platforms. Be on the lookout soon as we will give you an inside look and Q&A of the Richland County Jim Hamilton L.B. Owens Airport. Richland County government offices will be closed on Thursday and Friday, November 26th and 27th in observance of Thanksgiving. Curbside trash collection services is suspended for that Thursday. Collection routes scheduled Thursday will be picked up Friday, and Friday's collection will be picked up Saturday. Numbers have returned from our recycling event at Irmo High School on October 3rd. The recycling event drew in 1,269 vehicles and over 67 tons of recyclables collected. Recyclables were split between electronics, hazardous waste, paper, scrap metal, tires, household goods, and cooking oil. But if you missed the event, there's still time to recycle those goods. The county offers two drop-off centers offering complete recycling services. The CND Landfill Drop-Off Center is open Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. and Saturday from 7 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. While the Lower Richland Drop-Off Center is open Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. and also open on Sunday from 12.30 p.m. to 5 p.m. We continue our Watch and Learn series with a look at larval host plants. Conservation analyst Shanda Cooper takes us back to the pollinator garden to learn more. Hi. It's Chanda Cooper with the Richland County Conservation Division and the Richland Soil and Water Conservation District. Welcome to Richland County's Pollinator Demonstration Garden. Butterflies are one of my favorite pollinators and we have around 150 different species in South Carolina. One way to conserve and protect these beautiful creatures is by planting larval host plants. What is a larval host plant? 
It's the plant that provides food for the larval form of the butterfly, which is also called a caterpillar. Most butterfly species specialize on only one or a few types of plants, so if you don't have the right larval host plant for the butterfly you hope to attract, you won't have eggs or caterpillars. We have several different larval host plants growing in this garden. This partridge pea is the larval host plant for the cloudless sulfur butterfly, which is a beautiful yellow butterfly that's common in the eastern U.S. Milkweed is an important larval host plant for the monarch butterfly. We have two types of milkweed growing in this garden, and they both provide great forage for monarch caterpillars. One of my favorite larval host plants is the maypop, also called passion vine. It has amazing purple flowers, green egg-shaped fruit, and it's the larval host plant for the gulf fritillary butterfly. Garden manager Anne-Marie Johnson recently found gulf fritillary caterpillars on the maypops in the garden. Let's check it out. Now we were talking about larval host plants. Well, here is the real deal, live action. Looky here, we've got the caterpillar of a fritillary butterfly, and it is feeding on passion vine, our native passion vine. This is a perfect example of a host plant in action, and this is what they need to turn that caterpillar into a butterfly. If you're adding larval host plants to your garden, be prepared for them to be eaten by hungry caterpillars. This is a sign that your garden is a success. This pollinator demonstration garden is supported in part by an Urban Agriculture Conservation Grant from the National Association of Conservation Districts. Funding was provided by the USDA Natural Resources Conservation Service. You can view our entire Watch and Learn playlist on our Richland County YouTube page at Richland Online or on Facebook at Richland SC with new episodes premiering every Wednesday. County employees continue to work hard for you each and every day. Even when our doors are closed, the work doesn't stop. Here's a look at some recent statistics. You can watch repeats of the most recent Engage Richland show on RCTV between noon and 8 p.m. each day or watch anytime on the county's Facebook and YouTube pages. To give us feedback or share ideas for upcoming shows, email PIO at richlandcountysc.gov. For all of us at the Richland County Public Information Office, I'm Paul Harris. And remember, stay safe, Richland County.